The Jake Asman Show will begin shortly. Thanks to all these great Patreon members who help support the show. Get your super chats ready. Jake will be here in just a moment. If you love the New York Jets, this is the place to be. And now, the Jake Asman Show. ESPN Jets insider Rich Samini is predicting that the Jets will get lucky in the NFL draft. Is Rich right? Plus, what does that look like? For the New York Jets, just 16 days from right now. We got a lot to talk about. Robbie Sabo, co-founder of Jet X, will join us in his weekly spot. So let's hit it and get it started. Man, our Jets are primed for a historic season. We bleed Jet Green each and every day. This is not the same old Jet. We have Garrett Wilson. Let's go. We have Brees Hall. Please subscribe and hit the like button below. Super Jet, baby. Cut the line. We have Sauce Gardner. We have Quinn and Williams. The Jet bandwagon is loaded. Now it's time to talk all things New York Jets. It's the Jake Asman Show. Ah, here we go on the day after the most overrated event of all time, the solar eclipse. It is indeed the Jake Asman Show. A lot to talk about and fresh from his vacation in Aruba is the co-founder of JetXFactor.com, the great Robbie Sabo, joins us now. Good morning, Robbie. Good morning. And uh, yeah, first vacation in 20 years, it feels like, number one, number two. What did you do for the eclipse? Did, did Jake have glasses on? Oh, I, I put the glasses on, Robbie, and it, it did absolutely nothing. <laughs> did you wear sunblock too, or did yeah. you brave it? I put SPF a thousand on because I burned. <laughs> you, know. you know, it to me it was just overcast. It got a little darker in New York yeah, City. It was cloudy. Nope, that yeah. was about it. I, yeah, uh, in I, Jersey I here. Yeah, in Morristown here, it was cloudy. I mean, we saw it for a brief moment while walking the dog, and uh, I didn't know. You, you can't get a full eclipse in certain areas. I, I got to talk to Bill Nye or somebody. <laughs> I was expecting a full one, and I just got that that little thumbnail, you know, God's thumbnail. So I was kind of disappointed. Well, on that note, you just got back from vacation, and while you were gone, the debate on who the Jets should draft – has just continued to amplify. And I put out a tweet this morning. I got involved with the Bauer boys, and I already regret it because my mentions are a disaster, saying I don't quite understand the idea that the Jets are going to take a tight end at 10 because of the fact Tyler Conklin, I think, is really underrated, and Jeremy Rucker's got a lot of talent. And to me, that pick should be used on either a wide receiver or an offensive line. So I don't know how much... Bauer boy discourse you were paying attention to on vacation, but what have you made of the two sides of the never ending debate involving Brock Bowers, which will finally reach its conclusion 16 days from right now. And to boot, they like your boa. I mean, they really do like your boa. I think more than people think. Um, I mean, where I stand right now, I'm kind of on, I'm more on your side of the fence where to take a guy number one to take a guy that high at number 10 he's got to be no doubt about it he's got to be no doubt about it generational is bowers that i don't know and if i'm going back and forth i'll lean more conservatively especially in a win now year that's number one number two again we've talked about it it the transition for inline blocking from college to the pros is not what it used to be it's so much more difficult so if, if you take Bowers, I look at him as a receiver in 2024, period. I mean, he would have to do so many stunning things during the summer to make that not be the case. So given those two variables, I don't like it at 10. However, if tight end drops a little bit, Bowers drops a little bit, like I think it may happen. And I'm not talking about you know to the second round. I'm talking about to the mid first. A trade down for him, I'm much more okay with, uh, depending on you know the assets acquired in that trade down. I think it's a good point. And there was a story that came out yesterday 
that the Colts are looking to potentially move up to target Brock Bowers. And then I immediately hit the, you know, the Joe Douglas button on Twitter and said, huh, Colts want to trade up to get Bowers. Well, I know who they should call. Uh, so if, if they want to come up, give JD a call and, and let's make a deal here, right? Because let the Colts take Bowers. Jets could get their second round pick, move back five spots, and then the Jets are cooking with gas in that first and second round now. Hey, JD is the value man. And, and that's still the best uh, JD altered clip there is. It's so simple yet perfect. That walk <laughs> is just, it, how do you describe that walk? Confident yet not really oh so confident. It, it's crazy. He's just rumbling down the floor in Park Field. Uh, he's the value man. And the way the board is set up, Bowers at 10 isn't value. And one of the five offensive tackles, if you want to go one of the four and, and take Fontenot out, that's fine. One of those guys will be there in the mid-first round, even maybe early 20s, depending on how things fall. And that's the value that I see. So, you know, if I'm betting, I'm not betting on Bowers. I'm betting on a, a trade down with Latham or a trade down with Fawaga or Fashanu it, it, or, you know, just a straight up pick at 10. I, I think if all is there, it's no doubt about it. They're going to celebrate like it's New Year's Eve again. Um, but if you're betting and you're you're going off with Douglas's history, that's that's pretty much it. Would you say if the Jets don't take Joe Alt and he's there at 10, someone should be shot? They should be shot. They should be shot. They should be shot. Yeah, you know, it's um it, we'll, we'll go paintball gun shot at, at close range. Agree. Like I would be all over it, you know. Admittedly, I haven't dug into the film as much as say a Joe Blewett who who doesn't think all is as high as people have. I think he still has him first on the board, maybe Latham past him in his mind, I don't know, but I'm still all over all based on his pedigree, um based on his leadership, his intangibles. 6'9 monster, you know, Latham has longer arms, I think, which appeals to Douglas. But uh, yeah, I'm going all, all the way. I could see Latham being one of the first big surprises in this draft. I could th I, I could see Latham going in the top 10. I think NFL teams are higher yeah. on Latham than the general public is at this point, because it's going to be a team that sees the athletic ability, sees the traits and thinks we get them in our program. We can make this guy the best tackle in the league. Like, I just think there's going to be a team. And it might be Tennessee. Honestly, because Tennessee's got a really good offensive line coach. Jet fans, we know him well, and Bill Callahan. It wouldn't surprise yeah. me if Bill Callahan's like, that guy's the most talented lineman in the draft. I want him because I know I'm going to be able to mold him like clay into what I want him to be. It's a great point. And Callahan, what do we know about him? He's a counter power trap man guy. Like, he'll run zone schemes, of course, too. But, you know, from those old Jets ground and pound teams, he's a power running guy. And I'm not saying Alt can't do that. Of course he can. Um, you know, he's a pass protecting frame first and foremost, you know, still a solid run blocker, but Latham fits that to a T. So that's a great point. If you're watching this live right now. We're talking, of course, with Robbie Sabo in his weekly spot. Make sure you guys go to jetsxfactor.com for all your daily Jets content needs. If you have a question for Robbie and I to respond to, a super chat, whatever's on your mind, write it in and we'll interrupt our show to get to that as quickly as possible. So I want to put up on the screen right now, Robbie, a Rich Samini mock draft that he put out there earlier this morning because the longtime Jet reporter is predicting yeah. something that I don't know if a lot of Jet fans would predict. Rich to predict the Jets will get, quote, lucky in the draft 16 days from now. And Samini's mini mock, he has the New York Jets selecting wide receiver Rome Adunze with the number 10 pick and his rationale is simply because look at the amount of quarterbacks that go in the top four. He has Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels, Drake may and JJ McCarthy going one through four. McCarthy goes to the giants who trade up two spots to take him the first major, major surprise besides McCarthy at four to the giants. Not that McCarthy going four is a huge surprise, but maybe to the giants, it would be Brock Bowers going all the way to number five to the Chargers. And I got to admit, I would be surprised by this pick because the Chargers have such an obvious need for a receiver. They also want to run the ball and Jim Harbaugh's big, tough offensive line kind of guy. I guess you could sell me on, well, Bowers is a tight end, so he helps you as a receiver and a blocker, but still it would surprise me. And then Arizona, after they 
traded with the Giants to go back from four to six. They take Marvin Harrison Jr. Joe Alt is the first offensive lineman off the board at seven to ten to see. Dallas Turner, first defensive prospect off the board at eight to Atlanta. Malik Neighbors is still there for Chicago at nine. And then the Jets take a guy that we know Garrett Wilson wants in the draft. They select Roma Dunze, the stud big boy, six foot four wide receiver from Washington. So your thoughts on this? Could the Jets actually, as Samini says here, get quote a little lucky with Roma Dunze making it the 10? This is the first time I'm seeing this. And I kind of, I kind of think it's more split 50-50 If if Rome will fall to ten, I don't think it's that shocking. Um, number one, because of how the board may look. I mean, what are the chances the Chargers trade down? That's my first question. I don't know. I mean, I know Harbaugh. He he's a value guy too. It's possible, but Giants trading up two spots right there. I don't. You know, it's tough to see. So if they don't. It's still possible a Dunze falls to 10, and I'm with you. I'd be a little stunned if they take a Dunze at 10. I think they'd they'd look to trade down first and foremost. Uh, but if they can't and they find themselves in a pickle like they did last year, that's going to be the hot topic. Do they go with a tackle or a Dunze? Uh, right now, I'm leaning tackle as long as they love the guy. Uh, the one thing, I, one great positive about a Dunze, even though I'm not as high on him as others, is he fits the Jets' offense perfectly. You keep Garrett in the slot. You have a Dunze, a, a bigger possession guy on the outside with Mike Williams. Okay, those tr that trio is not as explosive as you'd like. You'd kind of want a more explosive. I'm not saying a Dunze is a, a slouch. You know, he's explosive, but it's not like a, a Neighbors or Garrett, for example. Um, but it's perfect to keep Garrett in the slot. That's the great positive about a Dunze. I love a Dunze as a prospect. I think if you talk about like the best fit for the Jets versus him, and neighbors, I would yeah. say Adunze is a better fit for the reasons you outlined with the size. Yeah, but I think neighbors are the better prospects. I almost wonder if this scenario played itself out. Would the Jets try and trade up two spots, get to eight with Atlanta? Atlanta, if they still want Dallas Turner, they could get that guy at 10. Flip Atlanta a fourth if you have a higher grade on neighbors versus Adunze. Or if they grade them both comparably, then maybe they would just stay at 10 in this scenario and take Roma Dunze. It's um, Tennessee is the big one to me. I mean, all seems to be cemented. But what if Tennessee doesn't take all? What if something happens there? Yeah, what if the I first mean, lineman off the board is Latham and then all of a sudden Alt's there at 10? Uh, that's so, so not, I wouldn't say realistic, but it's it's incredibly possible. And would if, you take not, Alt or would you take a receiver? If you could get, if you could have, okay, so you would go Alt over Dune say, what about the Alt only guys I'm taking over all are Harrison or Neighbors? And I know neighbors doesn't fit, but he is so damn explosive and fits this league so perfectly that he and Garrett could work it out. All right, Robbie. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to hit the sounder and you're going to tell me who right now and subject to change still got 16 days. You yep. think the Jets are taken at number 10. It, Latham. And I say Latham because really? I think I think trade down is the first. It, I think trade down is the first logical possibility. So I'll go trade down and Latham. Okay, I like that answer. So trade down and Latham. If they were to stick and pick a ten, let's say they couldn't find a trade partner, Ooh. which we did a mock yesterday called Thompson and I, and it was hard to find anyone that we could trade with. We offered like seven different deals to seven different teams. We couldn't get a yes. If they stay at ten, who are the Jets selecting? It's so close, man. It is so freaking close. It, and, and I'm going back and forth between Latham and Bowers. And flip of a coin, I will shock the world and go Bowers. Brock Bowers. The Bower boys will be having a party. Yes. I, I'm not saying I agree with it, but flip of a coin, when you're in a spot, and you're scrambling and you're trying to trade down. You're trying to make it work. You know what you want to do because of value. You know you want that, those extra assets. And I think this is what happened to them last year where McDonald was the highest guy on their board. Bowers will be the highest guy on their board. I mean, if it's up to them, I think they take Latham mid-round over Bowers at 10. But when you're scrambling and, it, and it's nut crunching time, you got to go highest guy on your board, and I think it'll be Bowers. Now, I have actually seen the future, Robbie. I know mm -hmm. what the Jets are going to be doing. 
16 days from right now. First off, one of our great listeners, Lane Kerner, the Lane Train, will be announcing the pick. So let's go to the future and find out who the New York Jets will be selecting. On the 2022 draft pick, <laughs> the pick goes to Penoble out of college. Yeah! Is that, is that Bruce Hall? Is that the Bruce Hall dude? Oh, of course it is. Ladies and gentlemen, the Jets have selected Knoble out of college, and that is the pick in the 2022 draft, Robbie. Knoble, man. They, uh, there's a Knoble's amusement park in PA. Shout out to all my PA folks. Uh, someone in the comments has to know about that place. Great for a great amusement park for kids. I, you know, never never connected it to NFL draft until today. Bruce Thank you, Lane. Bruce Hall. That's our guy, the lane train. For those who missed uh, the beginning of yesterday's third show, if you know, you know. He's uh, leading, the, pack. Dude, he's leading the whack pack right now. That's what I'll say about that. Comments, questions, super chats for Robbie Sabo. What do we make of uh, Rich Samini's mock here saying the Jets will get lucky at Dunze Falls? I'll tell you what, this to me would be a dream scenario for the Jets if they can end up with one of the big three receivers and not have to trade capital to do it. I'm team trade up for the receiver or trade back. If they were to stick and pick a 10, this to me is the dream scenario where you get a player that you were probably willing to move up a couple spots for, but you get that guy at 10. So let me ask you this, uh, Jake, yep. would you trade up for a Dunze or are you just trading up for Harrison or neighbors? I would trade up for all, any of those three. Now I think a Dunze, if he's perceived as the third guy, he would probably be my preference. If you don't have to trade up all the way to, let's say like four or five to mm -hmm. get, Marvin or to get neighbors because I think a Dunze it might only cost you like a fourth this year and a pick next year whereas I think if you're going all the way up to four or five because you Give want Marvin or you want neighbors I know Jeremiah suggested it would only take next year's two and maybe like a pick this year I think it's going to cost next year's one which I want to avoid if possible yes I I see no situation where he's trading a one um and I agree with you it would be it would be too costly to go up to five or even four couple super chats to start us off here shout out to everyone tuned in please hit that like button we only got 68 likes it goes a long way towards the show continuing to grow mike writes in he says the following but first let's hit the sounder for our man mike i am torn on what i'd like to see my head says draft o line or trade back my heart says go for it trade up and get neighbors i'll tell you what mike Either scenario, I think, is exciting for a Jet fan. If they trade back and get picks, you're like, Joe Douglas has done it again, navigating the board. If they trade up and they end up with neighbors, you're drafting Garrett Wilson 2.0. How would you not be ecstatic about that? So yeah. I, I think either way, if you're a Jet fan draft night and they make either one of those moves you suggest, I think you're going to be pumped up and excited about it. it. The tricky thing for the anti-Bowers at 10 people is this. When, when they're putting together the big board, how is Bowers not number four? It, Harrison, all neighbors, or Harrison, neighbors, all, then Bowers. Who could possibly jump Bowers on the big board? Are you talking just overall prospects or weapons? Overall, they're overall big board in terms of you eliminate quarterbacks. I mean, would they take Caleb Williams if he drops to 10? For sure. But eliminate quarterbacks, their overall big board. I, I kind of have it. Harrison one, Holt two, Alt two, neighbors three, Bowers four. And then pick, take your pick at tackle number five. I love that. I, I mean, that. that's the tough thing. Like, if they get to 10 and there's no movement, you know, in neighbors, a dune, and throw a Dunze in there too. Uh, neighbors, a Dunze, Harrison, and all are gone. Who are you going to pick? Uh, Bowers is the guy on, the, on top of that list. So that's the tricky thing navigating this draft. I hope they don't love Bowers as much as the fan base does. That's all. That's I, what I'm hoping for. I believe that's true. Uh, to what degree is the question, but I believe that's true because of their situation. It's win now, and incorporating him into the inline blocking scheme is not easy. And, uh, you know, I can't expect miracles in year one. So for all intents and purposes, he's going to be a big receiver to me well, in year he, one. He, here's the thing with Bowers, too. It's not that I don't think he's a really good prospect. He is, but if you're taking him that high, the, his floor is he's got to be one of the best tight ends in the league right away like right away he doesn't he doesn't get a grace period like it's an all-in year so he needs to be really really good instantly he needs to have the immediate impact that sam laporta had as a second round pick like that's what we're talking about here you know i, I had a scout tell me robbie i said this on the show when you're on vacation 
I had a scout tell me that Bowers is a better version of Dalton Kincaid. And my question to this person was, well, how much better? Because like Kincaid had a nice rookie year, but go compare his stats to Tyler Conklin. Conklin with Zach Wilson, Tim Boyle, and Trevor Simeon had similar numbers to a guy who had Josh Allen throwing him the football, who was an MVP candidate. So I, I say all that to say, okay, like, yeah, Kincaid's a nice player, but he, Kincaid's not worth the top 10 pick. And neither would Bowers be if that's his comp in year one. Yeah, you look at Kincaid, maybe he, he is a superstar uh, for all for all we know we don't know it, it, my point is tight end is is really a teamwork position in the nfl these days you know there's a lot of 12 personnel there are a lot of two tight end sets where one may play h back lean towards that and and do a lot of sifting across the line and, and you know with inside zones and mid zones um screens so you really have to be dialed in to the entire offense a receiver doesn't you know, you're stock blocking your guy, your corner. You don't need to know the rushing schemes, tight ends. It is that your mind has to be not on par, but closer to the quarterback than pretty much any other position on the field. Super chat from Ace of Spade. I like Fontano's versatility. What's his floor slash ceiling? I mean, I, I like the fact that he gives you depth at four positions on your own line in year one immediately because you can play both guard and he could play tackle. Um, I, I saw Buffalo Jet fan was watching film on him and came away really impressed with what he could do. So you know, what I've seen from him, from my untrained, you know, I don't know how to truly evaluate offensive linemen like the Joe Blowitz and Andrew Fialcos of the world do, Robbie. But mm. I like him a lot. And I know Connor Rodgers has been singing his praises for months before it was like the in thing to do in this fan base. So I'll tell you what, if they took Troy Fontano even at 10, I would have no problem with that because you're basically talking about drafting a six man for a basketball analogy. This guy can give you flexibility, versatility at every position on your O-line besides center. He's AVT reincarnated. And then you're set up for any injury this year. And then he's your long-term answer at one of the tackle spots starting next year. So I, I love the idea of taking him. This is going to sound like a cop-out answer, but with O-linemen, especially with any player, but with any prospect, but with O-line, especially, Film is just a, a tiny, not tiny, but it, it's just a portion of the whole puzzle. You know, who that individual is as a person. Does he have that internal drive? Uh, does he know the difference between, you know, hurt and injured? It, there are so many things that go into it. His capability between the ears. It's just, I hate evaluating. I hate giving definitive answers without getting to meet these guys. And I am glad it's not, you know, it's not COVID repeated. You know, Douglas, he went with Becton, didn't have much time to meet with him, busted, didn't work. AVT got that one right, you know, save for his injuries. He's got to stay healthy. So what kind of kid is Futano? That's that's what I would love to dig around, and I'm going to try to do that from now until the draft. Michael writes in, let's go Islanders. Beat the rags tonight. Uh, Jake's uh, our good luck charm. It's, it's Robbie, too early to throw up. Are like, you ready? On. I got my uh, my my I, now I'm back home and I was went to my Long Island home. I got my old school Rick D Pietro jersey that doesn't fit me anymore because it's like a kid's medium, but we're rocking it right now. Let's go, my coworker Rick. <laughs> Do you own any fish sticks jerseys? Uh yeah. Well, I so I have the uh, the like the new ones they brought back. I'm at Martin. Okay, one. Yeah. those are okay. Be, those are solid. Uh, yeah, I like them a lot. I'll be at UBS tonight to watch the game, so I'm excited. Nice, nice. So, will you hit any playoff games up? If they make the playoffs, I mean, I'm not going to. Oh, they're making it, dude. They're, don't, tell me, Matt, don't tell me. Have you watched the Islanders this year? I mean, they're, they're the most Jekyll and Hyde team ever. Oh, come on, Benigno. They're making it. There's no jinx here. It's They are so hot. Wah has them going. They're, what are they, third place right now? Just don't fall out of third. I don't want to deal with you guys. You or Tampa. I don't want to deal with either of you guys. You know, Pitt, Washington, Philly, fine. It, if Boston passes the Rangers, that's what I'm all over. If Boston passes the Rangers, Rangers got to play Tampa. I, I want no part of that. Well, I'll tell you what. The the worst thing for the Rangers, I think, would be to play the Islanders or Tampa in the first round because there's just no pressure on either of those teams. Like if, yes. if the Rangers don't win the Cup, it's a failed year. Like they're they're it's in. Gonna be, it's going to be a war if it's either of those teams. Like Pitt. I know Tortorella's a pain in the ass. Crosby's a pain in the ass. But give me Pitt, Washington, or Philly. Our guy VR writes in Giants trading up for McCarthy at four is like running in place. It, it's it's wild to me the love that JJ McCarthy is getting. I'm not saying he's not an intriguing prospect, but like, and it's all crapshoot anyway at the quarterback spot. But man, like 
There, there was not one time I watched the Michigan game this year, and I watched them a decent amount because they were one of the best teams in college football and thought, mm-hmm. yep, that guy's a top five pick. So, I, I mean, I, I don't quite get it. Uh, maybe he ends up being great. I mean, no one thought C.J. Stroud was going to be the greatest rookie quarterback we've ever seen. So, like, you just never know. Like, it's a crapshoot. I bet you if five guys go in the first round, chances are two or three of them are going to be bust. That's just how it goes no matter who it is. But I don't get the McCarthy – top four buzz or McCarthy third quarterback taken in front of Drake may now. Like I, I personally don't get it. And if he goes to the giants, uh, I would be fascinated how that would play itself out. Yeah. I'm with you. I don't like McCarthy and I don't think Dable likes him either, but, but Dable, he's such a great quarterback mind that he could like anybody because he could see that guy and turn him into something. See when I'm, when I'm evaluating guys, you know, even in the pros, you gotta context is huge. Who's coaching them. And Harbaugh is one of those guys like Dayball who can get the most out of his quarterback. And with McCarthy, he hit him a lot. Didn't ask him to do much. He was a leader. He, he, he was a, he's a great quarterback in terms of being a field general. But will that translate to the NFL? I, I don't see it. And it's crazy to me. You're right. It's crazy to me how these quarterbacks go so high, but it's like playing the lotto. And these personnel guys know it's like playing the lotto. But it's worth playing that lotto. Uh, ever since the um, the draft salary slots changed post Sam Bradford, uh, because if you if you draft a guy and it doesn't work, you could easily get rid of him, and it doesn't crush your salary cap. So it's the way of the world. Will it be changed anytime soon? I don't know. You know, it's got to be in the new CBA. But it's the lotto, and quarterbacks will keep going high, and more than fifty percent will bust. And I think McCarthy is in that category. Steady Eddie, Edward Ziff writes in, how much did the Cam Clark neck injury impact the Jets O-line the past couple of years? Well, I don't know if we know the answer to this for sure. I I was intrigued by what type of prospect he was, and obviously incredibly unfortunate that he suffered the career-ending injury. I mean... You know, for all we know, he could have been a starter for this team by now, or he could have been, you know, another Max Mitchell and, you know, just a journeyman backup type. So, yeah, I don't I don't know if we could say the Jets O line has been bad because of what happened with Cam Clark. It obviously didn't help, but I uh, will we'll never know the answer to that. Unfortunately, it's a terrible situation that happened to him. Yeah, I mean, I was covering the team when they drafted him and he showed something early in camp and they tried to insert him. He, he got inserted a little bit, but. You know, once that first month of his career passed, that was pretty much it. And he never got a chance again. I, I don't think, like you said, he's not the reason why everything has fallen to pieces. But uh, with Cam Clark, he's the perfect example of what the Jets O-line has had in terms of ills the past few years. The injury uh, that leads to to nothing in terms of what we what was either promised or possible production. If you're within the next 100 people to go and follow me on Instagram right now, at Jake Asman, I will add your name to a list to do a Gus Buster umbrella giveaway. I'm trying to grow my Instagram following, so stop what you're doing, at Jake Asman. It's linked in the description for this video. Give me a follow there, at Jake Asman on the gram. Robbie, are you ready for some phone calls on our Gus Buster umbrella hotline? Hey, let's do it. Ladies and gentlemen, Ricky NY starts us off. Hello, Ricky. Hey, how's it going, Jake? Um, Robbie, good, good stuff over there on X Factor. Um, I'm glad to see that uh, you guys added Andrew. Uh, I love it when yes. Andrew comes on this show. Uh, have you guys ever thought about doing like a, a collaboration film breakdown with, with uh, Andrew and Joe, like good cop, bad cop, Andrew being the good cop? <laughs> yeah, we've we've talked about it, and actually, so I've been out of the content. I mean, I, I write here and there, but I used to do a lot more film and a lot more content. Um, in a week or two, I'm going to be back full time to content. So there's a lot, a lot of good things happening with film and uh, content with JetX in about two weeks from now. Right on. Okay, okay. keep us updated. Look, look forward to that. And we will. Uh, you know, I. Uh, I myself personally am kind of on the uh, team trade back. If Adunze isn't there, which I I don't think, you know, I don't really think that he's going to be, Uh, but it's just going to be really interesting to see 
you know, like Jake always says, it takes two to tango. You know, we, we got to find somebody to trade with. And yeah. uh, that that would be the biggest thing is, you know, who really wants to, to move up and, and what for. And uh, all I can say is somebody please draft Bowers before we get there so, so that this <laughs> conversation can end. Hey, um, it would be lovely if Tennessee shocks the world and does so, but um, I don't see it happening. Or the Chargers at five is uh, uh, Rich Semini hey, mocked. Harbaugh, you know, Harbaugh's a um, – He's like, I found Antonio Gates, Chargers fans. Yeah, Watch he's an unforgiving fella, and, you know, some of the, some of those guys are some of the best coaches. So uh, Harbaugh's a wild card. There's no question. You could see him trading down. You could see him going receiver. You could see him going in a lot of different directions, so – um, that would be, that would be, I agree. That would be sweet. Super chat from JJ. He writes in sleeper right. moment from the lane call was when he said, maybe I should announce the draft pick. Number four draft pick should be Jake Asman being drafted. L M F A. O. look lane has had a lot of memorable calls. I would put his call yesterday. And at the, I think it was around the 13 or 15 minute mark of the third show I did yesterday, talking about Schefter's comments on Zach Wilson. I'd put that up there with any of them, uh, JJ. You know, I'll say this. There's a reason why we play the lane train sound effect. All right. A legend. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, more of your calls right now. We got BMAC on the hotline. Hello, BMAC. Uh, hey guys, uh, uh, good morning. What's up, B-Mac? Uh, I just want to call, uh, because, uh, the, uh, as far as what you all should do in the first round, I still lean on offensive linemen. Uh, it, I know it'd be great to give Rogers another weapon, but, you know, he's only, you know, he's not getting any younger. You want as much bodies on the death front as possible so he can, uh, play, uh, most of the year for y'all, and, and because y'all gonna need them for 17 games for y'all to have a successful season. And then my next question is, um, uh, I don't know what y'all opinions on this, but do you think Rogers coming off the torn Achilles? Do you think he can still be mobile? Or uh, do 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 you think that will hinder his mobility? Uh, 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 T. I I don't. Uh, B Mac, because he's not a guy that is a scrambler anyway at this stage of his career. Like, I, I think Rogers' ability to kind of use like, like slide a hand, footwork in the pocket that that's just elite traits, like just being able to like buy time, like what Brady did too. Brady wasn't very athletic, but he was athletic no. in the pocket, if that makes sense. So, mm -hmm. you know, because Rogers has never been a guy that relies on his speed to execute. I, I think he'll be fine. Maybe he's a little slower. That's natural just with age, though. I think more so than just the injury, if anything. Yeah, the, the mobility. Yeah, because, uh, uh, oh, go ahead. No, it's okay. I was just going to say the mobility in uh, the structured. The, the mobility in the structured stuff, he, he'll be fine. Uh, the only thing, it won't be the same. And it wasn't going to be the same this past year either. Like, he got hurt on a play where he was trying to make something happen out of nothing. You know, that three-step cut block, Dwayne Brown. Um, juices were flowing. He probably should have lived to play another down, but you know, it was the first series of the season, so he's ready to roll. I'm not too worried about it either. Johnny Quest up next. Hello, Johnny. Johnny. Johnny, go on. He's on a quest right now, I'll tell you. Johnny, where are you going? Where are you going? Going to the backyard? 7 Eleven. Johnny. Johnny, you're on the air. Yep. All right, Johnny. Thank you for the time. Uh -huh. <laughs> Amazing. I don't know what happened there. Johnny, call back. I don't know if you heard us. Uh, let's go to Bobby Midnight. Bobby, how about our New York Yankees, baby? Anthony yeah. Rose, Juan Soto. Who's going to win the MVP? I say Juan Soto. We got a good player. We got a good player. That's good right. player. Hey, He's Bobby. ridiculous. How you, doing? Sabo, how you doing? Good. What's up? I think the Jets should, like uh, Jay Gasman said, trade up to get an offensive lineman, which is Joe Alt, which I want on my team, but I don't think I think the Giants want uh, that quarterback. Uh, what was that quarterback's name? JJ McCarthy. McCarthy. Yeah, and Jay, did you see Gator did me impression me on his show? I did. What did you think, Bobby? Did Gator nail me? I cracked up. This is me on his thing. He did me like this. 
Well, that's no, that's normally you, Bobby. We we never see your full face. We only see. I half hand, the how's that much better now, right? Yeah, look look how handsome you are. I got gray hair too. See, gray hair. Yeah, I don't. Do you use a little just for men? A little walk yeah, by Fraser? I use a lot of just for men. I started coloring my hair when I was. Six. Oh come on, dude! You gotta be be you. Be the way God no, made you. I don't like gray hair. Uh, when ah. when I'm almost sixty. I'll take it when I'm sixty. The girls oh, love it. Come on, you gotta you gotta use it. You know, it's um, oh. you're wiser. You like gray you, hair, you, Robbie. Come on, I'm like I'm like the like Larry David leads his bald community. That's yeah. how I am to the gray. I, I don't know. Jake, uh, uh, have you seen Mr. Softy lately? Uh, you know what? I saw an ice cream truck yesterday, Bobby, uh, walking near Columbus Circle, but unfortunately it was not Mr. Softy. Oh, okay. Columbus Circle, that's where they used to have the Thanksgiving parades. You know? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We love the parade. I love New York. Let's go <laughs> Yankees. Let's go uh, Rangers. Let's go Giants and Jets. Bobby! <laughs> what a call by Bobby today. <laughs> That was tremendous. Uh, let's keep rolling. Johnny is still on his quest. We'll see if he can hear us. Hello, Johnny. Well, Johnny. What's up, guys? How you doing? What's Johnny, up? how was your quest? It's probably good. Less than Jake, maybe. You, you like that, fans? Uh, big fan. Big fan. Nice. Uh, so I was doing a yard work out here. Uh, by the way, 10.57 for that uh, Lane interview yesterday. 10.57, Mark. Ten, okay, so go back to the third show, people. You know what? I teased it long enough. Johnny Quest, you stay on the line. This is too good to not play right now. Everyone, yeah, I got to see this. You guys know when the Lane train calls in, this show could go anywhere, so buckle up. What's up, Lane Kerner? Zach Wilson is not going to come back. Why don't you think he's going to sign still with the Jets? Is it because he's not good? He stinks. Oh, stinks? Yeah, same feeling. The guy is terrible. I said announce the draft picks. Lane, I want you to announce a Jets pick. That would make my that would make my yeah. life. I mean, who am I going to pick, though, for the draft? Uh, on the 2022 draft pick, <laughs> the pick goes to Knoble out of college. Yeah! Then they tell you who the players are from, and their families get excited. You sign him, it's going to he, – he's to be good going into week one. Yeah, I know a lot of the football. <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> I love you, Lane. You're the best. What, what a draft pick. Lane, you are a national treasure. Uh, I mean, Robbie, it's just yeah. too good. Listen, it, I'd be a happy man if my appearance, my weekly appearance, is whack pack members only. <laughs> That's number one. Number two, your He Stinks is the the perfect encapsulation of the Mike Francesa. They stink about the Mets. That was he your stinks. Francesa moment. Enough. That was it. It, 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 it. I was fired up that night. Needless to say. Anyway, we'll which bring, night was uh, that? Do you remember which game it was? Yeah, I remember. It was the uh, it was the debacle on Thursday night football in 2022 against the Jaguars. I, I sat oh, there in the rain and I did the post game show for my car, hot spotting for my phone, and I did it for 40 minutes until my computer died because I had no charger. Couldn't end it. <laughs> Just awful. Couldn't end it. Anyway, yeah. let's go back to Johnny. He's doing the yard. What's up, Johnny? Hey, what's up? So, uh, Big Islanders fan here as well. I got a question for Robbie and you. If you had a pick, Islanders three straight cups. Well, the Rogers getting hurt. Six plays in. What do you pick? What do you mean? Like, if in, I in order for the Islanders to win three straight cups, Rogers got to well, get hurt the first game. I'm I'm, I'm a Rangers fan. So oh, you're a Oh, yeah, my answer that. is easy. You can suck it, Robbie. No. Oh, whoa, <laughs> whoa. I, I, I hate this question, Johnny. Question. I don't even want to like entertain it. Like it's just it's so it's so twisted. Like I know it's I, evil. I I haven't seen the Islanders ever win a championship. You're giving me three, but then like like my favorite team I root for, the Jets. Like Rodgers gets hurt six plays in again, and the season's over. like I I can't go through that again. Like as much as the joy of the three cups would be great, like the pain of going through. Three going through Rodgers getting hurt again, like I can't. And plus, can't. the NFL is everywhere. You're going to hear about the NFL so much more too. That's true. Yeah, no, I care, but I care too. I, as much as I love the Islanders, I care too much about the Jets and this fan base to go through that again. So I, 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 I would, I would turn down the three straight cups. As crazy as that sounds, I agree, Robbie. Also, uh, does Andrew have uh, valid working papers? Andrew, valid working paper. What, what are you trying to say? He's twelve. Isn't he? <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, no, he's good. He's a uh, he's a official freelancer for JetX. We love that. Uh, Faithful Fire Radio says, I followed you on IG. Charlie, you signed my hat very humbly at the main event in Farmingdale. Faithful Fire Radio. I do remember signing your hat. Thanks, man. I was shocked anyone wanted me to sign anything, let alone a hat, but I appreciate it. So thanks for the follow on Instagram. All right, we got a lot of people online here. A lot of people want in on the conversation. Ladies and gentlemen, we go to Darren up next on the show. Hello, Darren. Uh-oh, Darren. What are we doing? Uh, I'm here. I'm a, no, I'm here. I was in the middle of... Uh, I heard dude, a chainsaw. I'm in my tree. Yeah, that was a that was a whole saw going through a couple. Don't even worry about that. That's for closets downstairs. <laughs> when when a chainsaw plays and someone says, "Ah, eh, don't worry about that," it's kind of, um. Nah, it was freaking. I'm um, drilling through some shit over. Oh, okay, here. okay, it's a drill. Yeah, not a big deal. I didn't cut off my finger or anything. <laughs> All right, question to you, Robbie. Uh, it? how far, how much, I guess, would you give up to get to uh, Harrison Jr. Because I'm not that big into neighbors because I do think he's a clone of Garrett. I, two Garrett's isn't a bad thing. But I don't think I want to give up a whole lot of capital to get there. So how far would you trade up? What would you give up to get to like six and get a Dunze or to get Harrison Jr.? Um, I'm not giving up a first. No way. I'll wait. I'll take a a third round receiver because there are so many freaking receivers that it, it's deep every year. So one or two of the guys are going to slide to three. Um, so to answer your question, not much. Definitely not a first. And if I'm trading up, even a couple slots or, or three, or, you know, four, I'm going to try to really be be really stingy. And I want to join the gray hair club. Look at this afro I got going. Hey, is this working? It's almost Scott hair right here. You look like what's his name from Back to the Future. Uh, <laughs> what, Biff? Doc? Biff? No, not Biff. Uh, oh, the Doc. Yeah, doc. You, look like, you look like Doc. Yeah, exactly. I got to put a little gel in it. And one more thing. B yeah. Mac, good job cleaning up the sneakers. Good look show, doc guys. Brown. Thank you, Doc Brown. Appreciate you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, R and R says Jake doing eclipse coverage now. Home improvement shows. Yeah, a lot, a lot of people doing yard work, work in the attic or treehouse. Uh, you missed it yesterday, Robbie. I had a live cam in Dallas covering the eclipse. You want to see what that looked like? Yes. All right, here we go. Let's go live to Dallas. This eclipse was crazy yesterday. Look how dark it is. Uh, yep. Clouds? Yeah. What's going on here? Oh, I, <laughs> you know what? It's too early. You actually fooled me for a second. I'm like, what is this dude doing? <laughs> I fooled you. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go to someone who looked at the eclipse in the eyes the entire time. Gary in Texas is up next. Hello, Gary. And I live to tell about it, too. I'm, I'm still here. The eclipse did not get the best of me. Hey, or um, the earthquake? First, Robbie. Awesome. Yeah. I was the eclipse, Gary. This is what you were I didn't looking get at. The <laughs> I, and I, oh, and I Texas. I see a Texas flag crazy, back right? there. Okay. Mm -hmm. First off, I think you did an incredible job on uh, Bowers and all your takes today. I agree with almost everything you said 100%. And this totally erases your trash take on Carmella Anthony being overrated. So oh, God. He's awful. all is forgiven there. Okay. Um, I think that. Uh, a Dunze is going to be there at 10, and I think it's Murphy that goes. I don't think it's uh Bowers that goes in the top nine, I think it's Byron Murphy to the Bears at nine. And I think because I always had on my mocks, I always had a Dunze going to the Bears at nine, and so he's just not going to be there for the Jets. And the Bears have more draft capital if they wanted to trade up than the Jets do, so I always saw a Dunze going to the Bears. But everything I hear is that they, they want Murphy and they're willing to take him at nine which I think pushes a Dunze to 10. And to me, you have to take him. Like if you have Mike Williams on one side, a Dunze on the other, and then um, Wilson in the slot, but then you have Wilson and a Dunze for years to come. It's like you're, you're sitting pretty. Like you can get whatever quarterback comes in next after Rodgers, you just made his life really easy. Um, 
Uh, I want to talk about Bowers at 10, right? Just in case the Dunze is gone and I'm wrong. Um, we keep comparing him to other tight ends. I, I, I think, like, I don't know if you guys watch any high school football, but when there's like, a stud athlete who gets recruited by a college and he doesn't really have a position, they just list him as athlete. It's like, we'll figure yeah. out what to do with him on the field when he gets here. That's kind of my take on Bowers. I understand he's a tight end, like Steph Curry is a point guard. It's not really your traditional tight end. He's, I understand that's the position he's labeled at, and that's how he'll get paid. But he's – like, you compare him to Kincaid. I looked up the stats. Kincaid lined up in the slot on over 60% of his, of his snaps. And we're comparing Bowers as a super Kincaid. Like, he's going to line up everywhere. He's not just going to line up on, on the end. And I came up with this list. There are um, – if I said to you, the, the four best tight ends in football are Laporte, Kelsey – Kittles and Andrew. Your your ability to botch names is spectacular, Gary. It, it really oh. is. It, it really is. Uh, it, it, like, what did you call him? You called him Kittle. What, you you called him Kittle. Kittle. It's George Kittle. You called him Laporte. Yeah. It's Laporta. You call a do you call Roma Dunze? What do you call him? A Dunze. Yeah, but you say you don't normally say a Dunze. You say something else. Just go a on. Dunes? Yeah, yeah, a Dunes. Listen, you, to me. I'm it's from like he the he South. he lets the last syllable go. You know, like whatever the name is, like as, instead of Asman, as Jake. As. Gary, I get your point on Bowers. The problem is you trust the Jets to be able to utilize this great athlete and know what to do with him with Nathaniel Hackett calling the plays. Why not just trade up and get a receiver at that point who they can't screw up because it's hard to screw up using Marvin, Neighbors, or Dunze if you want a weapon that bad. So if you want to trade up to get Harrison, I'm all in. If you want to trade next year's one for Harrison, screw it. Do it. Like uh, next year doesn't exist. It's this year. If you want to trade up to uh, – I'm saying, it, what if the Bears win? There's other teams that might want to do that too. And then you also have to find someone that's willing to trade on the opportunity to take Harrison. If I'm all for that. Like, let's let's do it. Let's burn the ships. Let's go. Let's light a match. Burn the ships. Don't look back. Let's take Harrison. If next year everything is awful, then it is what it is. But I'm all in on this year. Like, if you want to draft Harrison and you want to trade all of your future draft capital, I don't know. Do it. Go ahead. Yep. Okay. I mean, it's, it's something they're going to weigh. There's no doubt. Knockouts don't matter if you're landed of jabs. My homework is to, I got to have a definitive answer on a Dunze next week by next week's appearance. That, don't worry. I, I, I have some good news for you, Robbie. Uh, Andrew Fialco of a website you might be familiar with, jetsxfactor.com, is doing yep. a Roma Dunze film review on this very show on Thursday. Mm. I think he just put one out on uh, – did he put one out on Just X Factor? I should know this, huh? Yeah. Right. Oh, no, Joe did. Joe did. So I think Fialco is going to do a Doomsday next on Jet X. So Asmin and Jet X. There we go. Beautiful. It's happening. It's all happening. Uh, shout out to all our Asmaniacs out there. If you become an Asmaniac, I got asked by someone yesterday on Instagram how to do it. You hit the join button that's located on the left-hand side of your screen. Make sure you have gift receipts on because sometimes you get lucky and someone out of the goodness of their heart decides to gift channel memberships. And that happens quite frequently on the show. You get all the perks of being an Asmaniac. You get a loyalty badge next to your name. You get custom emojis to use in the comment section and the live chat. You get bonus shows. You get shows released early. And you get to join some of our cool contests like our March Madness contest. And I want to give some love, by the way. I wrote this in our Discord last night. But if you're one of the top three people who – came in either first, second, or third, and our bracket challenge, contact me so I could set you up with the prizes you won. Shout out to Crezzy, who came in first place, ISURB4L, who came in second, and MLS underscore Jets, who came in third place. All three had UConn winning, but based on the point system, Crezzy got first place with 121 total points. ISU got 116 points for second place, and MLS Jets got 115 points, so battle for second and third, separated by just one point. So it came down to the bitter end with Dan Hurley and UConn winning it all for the second straight year, Robbie. Yeah, you know what's messed up? In my pool, there was uh like 70 or 80 people. I finished fifth, but I was the only person to have at least three of four final four teams. Really? How messed up is that? How do you not win getting three of the four? Like the, the point system must have been completely ridiculous. Probably too much points went to UConn for winning it all, then, right? I I think they didn't wait enough. Uh, like the first round, you can get 32 total points, but then the last round, you can only get like six total points. 
So it wasn't, it's it got to be more imbalanced, I think. Uh, Dave says, I'm a member of the Bowers No Jet Club. So Dave, mm. not a Bowers boy. <laughs> Bowers boy. Who came up with that one? Was that you? That was me, yeah. It's, it's got a nice ring to it. It must have been. I was tired of people saying Bowers truthers. I'm like, that's retired when Zach will with Zach Wilson. So I'm like, Bauer Boys makes more sense. Bauer Boy is perfect. More calls right now. We've got about 10 minutes left with Robbie. Please, if you're watching right now, we got 400 of you tuned in live, 146 likes. Need more from the audience. Hit that like button. It goes a long way towards our channel continuing to grow. Let's go to Matthew on the Gusbuster hotline. Hello, Matthew. Oh, I'm gonna move away. This guy's losing his mind right now. How are you? Hey, what's up, Matthew? What do you got? Two kids right there? I'm I was left alone with these savages. <laughs> <laughs> but I have a, a stupid Zach Wilson take I wanted to share. Oh God. Is it yeah. Shadow Realm worthy or Stupid Town worthy? Uh probably uh one of them. But so I my idea is that they have a um a Flash Gordon reboot just waiting. And Zach Wilson kind of looks like a young Flash Gordon. So I think with any ounce, a drop of success, we would have seen the the movies and the action figures just start flowing. So your, your take is that I think that's why success, he would have had endorsement deals like that. I think that's why he was around so long. Ah, there was some money tied up in these these, uh, you know, the endorsement deals, the, the, the toys, the games, the movies. That yeah. was my uh, that's my theory. If uh, Zach Wilson's Flash Gordon, who is Beckton? Oh, I don't know. It's uh, got to be the. I don't know. He's got to be like the comedic relief. He's got to get him hurt somehow, right? Like uh, <laughs> cause the. Uh, I don't know. Whatever. Yeah. Send no, me I away. think. I think Thank in the guys. at the end of the day, Zach Wilson will be gone, uh, unfortunately for this show. Yep, and uh, I mean that that right there is up there with. One of the stupidest things I have ever heard. Shout out to you, Matthew. Excuse me, miss. I need to return this damn child. He's no good. Sometimes a child just is no good. Take his one back. Yeah. What, what is that audio from? That's the great King Lowski. What the hell, what the hell is that? Who's King Lowski? Yo, come on, Robbie. You've been living under a rock. You don't know who the king is? Perhaps. Yeah. Would you like to get a sample on who the king is? Yeah, please. All right. Hold on. I got you. Um, I'm doing a Google search. Here, here we go. I enjoy. The only thing that can make this night better is some Charles Gorman mother's chicken soup. Hello, Charles. Hey, Charles! I need some more of that chicken soup! It's Lenten season for us Christians slash Catholics, so... And I'm sorry I didn't have any chicken soup today. You said I've got seen enchiladas. I had a calzone for dinner. I need it, Charles. It was delicious. Where is the recipe, Charles? Anyways, uh. I need some of your mama's chicken soup. I love to eat, so what can I say? Yes, 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 yes. I love this show, man. We got the best callers. We really. That's terrific. Now and you don't I've remember. Yeah, but you don't you, yeah. you don't remember the incident at Salah's press conference last season when like the Zach Wilson benching was like reaching like fever pitch. You don't remember King Lowski invaded the press conference? No, I do not. Hey Robert, thanks for taking my question. With Zach starting again Sunday, does he have any compromising photos of you or someone else in the organization? No, I, I, that's a fair question, Jake. Um, I'm going to take the fifth on that one. What the hell is this going backwards bullshit? You don't go backwards. You throw the ball out of bounds with your big goddamn arm, and you go back in the fucking huddle. No, I, I, it's a fair question, Neil. Um, this is bullshit. Jose Feliciano, the blind Puerto guitarist, can see that he is terrible. This kid does not want to run with the ball. Are you kidding me? This is the shit I'm talking about. You bitches ass. You did his ass on my damn field. No, I, I, it's a fair question, King. The damn damn year. We are seeing this in that town. I'm not trying kidding. to win the goddamn game. You gotta be kidding me. Sit his ass the fuck down. Get I could have made 20 yards with that goddamn hole. If your quarterback can now play in the NFL, they get rid of him. Oh, there's one of his 27 seconds. <laughs> oh, it's amazing. 
I don't give a shit. If you cannot play football, get your ass off the field. And walk around and wipe Rodgers' ass because that's all you're good for. And you're sitting here defending his bullshit. If I see Zach Wilson go on that field, me and Lowski are going up personally. And we're going to take his ass off the field. It is torture, man. God damn it. I'm fucking- all right, thanks, guys. The, the scholar hey. reactions are just perfect. It, it was a big moment last season. I mean, it, it got a lot of coverage. I'm, I'm sure you guys covered it on Jets X Factor. Maybe you just forgot. Yeah, I think we I think it just fell. It just slipped through the cracks. I well, might say. the good news is Robbie, the king has called in because he would like to introduce himself. King Lowski up next. What's up, King? Jake, my brother. Jake, my brother. Robbie, my brother. I'm surprised you don't know who the hell I am, son. And yeah. let me tell you something, Robbie. It's been a lot of bullcrap talk on this damn child, okay? It's enough time. It's enough for the child talk this morning, okay? Y'all don't woke me up with this child talking about what can we get for him. He's out of here. We gonna get rid of that damn child, okay? Get him out of now. Now something else is pissing me off this morning too. Okay, get in with this damn Bowers talk. Stay away from this damn Bowers kid. Okay, <laughs> I'm in Georgia. I know about him. I watched every game. He's overrated. Okay, we don't need a tight end that damn hot. All right, get a hold on. Get a damn receiver. Okay, enough with this damn Bowers talk. Next time you get Gary on this damn call and he talk about Bowers, you put fists on him. You put fists and cuffs on his ass, okay? You know boxing, Gary. You know what the hell that mean, all right? T-E-T-S, just shit, shit. T-E-T-S, just shit, shit. Thank you. Uh, we, need to get go, him, we need to get him and Crazy Alice in the same room. All right. You asked for the king, Robbie. You got yeah. the introduction. <laughs> oh, dear God. I need an education. Uh, shout out to Matthew. He just became an Asmaniac. I love it. So we, we put him in Stupid Town for a Splash Court and Zach Wilson take. And he said, you know what? Here's how I can make it up to the audience. I'm going to become an Asmaniac. So shout out to you, Matthew. Appreciate that. Mike has got a big time super chat for us. Mike has given us $40 of cash money today. Thank you, Mike. Got to give some love to Robbie. If anyone's not following Jets X Factor, you are missing out. Robbie's and Blue, it's my dog. Love his film work. Yeah, look, I say it all the time. Uh, JetsXFactor.com is the preeminent site if you are a Jet fan seeking daily content, cover the team, news articles, and also comprehensive coverage like analytics and film breakdown. Robbie's got a great team led by himself, Joe Blowett, Michael Nadia, Andrew Fialco, Rivka. I mean, great, great writers over at Jet, Jet X. Yeah, man. It's JetSexFactor.com, JetX Mobile on the App Store, Android, Google Play. And I, I can't wait. It, it's It's been too long, me being out of the mix a little bit too much. Um, but that's coming to an end. It's that's right. two weeks from now. It's uh, full steam ahead, my brother. And yeah. JetSex Factor and Asman doing a lot of things. Here we go, baby. Rob will be a part of our mega cast at, in Vegas. So I'm excited for that. And yeah. I'm also excited to do this. Money, 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 money. <laughs> New Jersey Super Trucker has gifted an Asmaniac membership to Franco in the comment section. So Franco Congliglioni. Hopefully I pronounced that Italian last name properly. If not, I apologize. But either way, Franco, you are now officially an Asmaniac. So make sure you thank New Jersey Super Trucker for the kind gesture. Got time for a couple more calls with Robbie here. Then I'll stay on and get to the rest. Let's go to Southern Jet. He's up next. What's up, Rich? All right, good, good, uh, whatever the hell it is. Good morning. Uh, how you doing? Got my, <laughs> got my Hurricanes hat on. Oh, you're ready for the playoffs. Yeah, live in Raleigh. Uh, you know, we've always not had enough scoring, losing all those one goal games to the Panthers in overtime. Uh, but, but you uh, guys have a head coach. Brenda Moore is just yep, phenomenal. Yeah. And we made, and Sveshnikov is back, and we picked up Tunsil and, uh, and what you don't know is I just read this morning, Grindamore lives actually a couple blocks away. Oh, um, really? Yep. Is that uh, the Hurricanes have called up a phenom for the playoffs, uh, Bruce Knoble. And he's, uh, 
he's he's going to be dead late, and <laughs> I couldn't resist, Jake. <laughs> I, I I I understand, Rich. I get it. <laughs> you know, and it's kind of like a disease when you watch the show for so long. You kind of get permutated <laughs> with that kind of humor. And what, um, where's this Knoble background? Was he trying to pronounce a, a name? I see. I, I we don't know. That's what makes it. <laughs> oh, it's a mystery. So great. <laughs> No, nobody knows what. Like I, I looked into every prospect after he initially said it, <laughs> and I still can't figure out who Kenobel is. Like, like people thought it was like you know Obi Wan Kenobel. Like now, we, now we have like memes for Lane Kenobi. I don't know who he was referring to, but Chuck Knobloch. All I can tell you is the Jets could use Kenobel. He would make a lot of a lot mm. of. He could play tight end, receiver, and offensive line. So he'd make every Bauer boy and O line ogre very happy in the fan base. Before I get to my question, as an aside, when you say Knoble, Noble, uh, I went to high school and was really good friends with uh, and communicated with him until his passing. Uh, we grew up in the same town, obviously. He's Marty Noble, if you remember him, the sports uh, writer for uh, baseball. Um, very big Mets writer. Uh, hey, the name is fam the name's familiar to me, but I can't picture his face. Yeah, yeah. But... Uh, my question was, uh, as we've been mentioning in the last couple of days, Douglas always drafts a running back. Oh, I'm in the rocking chair because I'm the old man, so I figured I'd give a little real comic relief there. But uh, um, we always draft a running back, and the guy I like, and I don't, know, I'm not sure where he's going to go because you can't trust these sites when they plug rounds on them. Um, is you know, I want a Brees Hall similar back because we've found out what happens when Hall goes out and you put a third down back in it doesn't work so um i like trey benson from florida state and do you have any idea where he's gonna go he's rated in you know the top 10 running backs but uh, I, he could be third round pick i've seen in some mocks he's probably yeah. what the top back by some in this i've done no homework on the running backs because like it, to me it's so I hard just, to project yeah i, I it's not like a couple of years ago when like we knew like Brees Hall was a borderline first. Bijan was definitely going in the first. Jameer Gibbs last year was going to be a first. Like to me, it's uh, it, it, it's 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 different this year with the running backs. That's why I think we saw, by the way, Rich, so many free agents sign right away because yeah. it's not a great running back class compared to the last couple of years. If he's a third round pick, do you think we would have to pick up another third to get him because we want to get an OL and a WR? Uh, it depends what they had done in the first round at that point. Well, that's what I mean. Say we got, you know, oh, you, you know, okay. I, I'm assuming we're going to go OLWR. I'll say this. It'll be, it'll shock me if they go running back third round, but yeah, I, I think they firmly, they firmly realize they need a third down back. Like the way I look at it, Brees, third you want back. to complement your top back with thunder versus lightning or lightning versus thunder. Brees is both. So Brees is that workhorse. Izzy is the number two workhorse, but you need a, you definitely need a receiver, blocker, pass well, that's catch. What, that's yeah. what Benson yeah. is. That's, that, Correct. that's yeah. And and if he goes to the fourth, I think we'd be fools not to pick him up in the fourth. Don't you agree? I could see fourth. I could see yeah. fourth. Third is third's a stretch. Third's tough. I hope they don't do it in the third. Now, like two forwards, that's prime. If they love a running back, they could use one of their forwards on a running back. Uh, Douglas has done that in every draft. He's taken at least one running back. Steve Asman's watching the show, Robbie. He says, I think we should make a Knobel jersey and have Allen wear it when he calls in. <laughs> what number? What number is it going to be? I gotta, we, we'll have Lane come back on and we'll ask him. I, I, we gifted Lane a, his own custom Lane train jersey. Lane, if you're watching, oh. I know you watch every show, buddy. I need you to wear the Lane Train jersey all three days of our mega cast. All right. We're going to have Lane on each day. Um, Jay Quest says, I got yelled at by my wife because King Lowski was screaming. Uh, <laughs> Nate says, My girlfriend, not a King Lowski fan. She just told me, she said, That's why. Why is that man screaming? I told her passion. <laughs> uh, that's one way to put it. There's definitely passion. Yeah. Uh, one more question for Robbie here. That we'll get to Cartman's question. I'll stay on to get to the remaining calls, but I appreciate Robbie giving us an hour of his time. Cartman says, "Who do you see being the next big playmaker on special teams after Justin Hardy leaving?" Irv, Irv Charles oh. is that guy, and he, he he rose to such a spot this past year, especially with Hardy's injury, that they're comfortable in cutting Hardy. In fact, Hardy stuck around longer than I thought. I thought they were going to cut him going into last year, but um, they stuck it out with him as a leader and 
it finally happens. And he he's a class act. He had a great message upon leaving. Um, Thank the fans, the organization, you know, Pro Bowl, all pro. So um, Irv Charles is that guy. Gonzo says King Lowski should have been at WrestleMania elite. Look, I, I would take King Lowski in any wrestling match. You put him against Cody Rhodes, give me a King Lowski anytime. Yeah, yeah. It's um and I actually saw some clips from WrestleMania. It was uh I man, saw some was... memes from WrestleMania too about the Jets. Did you? I didn't see any memes yet. I gotta check those out. Look at your screen. What was it? I clicked off. <laughs> 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 Who's that from? You guys? Uh I just saw it on Twitter. So I just grabbed nice. I forget who put it out there. The Shout Undertaker. Out Everyone thought Stone Cold was coming. Didn't happen. I thought so. Instead, you know what we had? We had, you know, you know, JD Stone Cold. <laughs> Just that's just the the perfect music. Hey, one more draft, one more draft from him, and uh, Jets fans are going to be happy. I think. Look, he has done a really good job to this point. If they can nail this draft, no one's saying it's got to be twenty twenty two where it's the best draft ever in right. franchise history. But if they could hit on a couple of their picks early, right? They had their first. For now, they have pick seventy two in round three. They got their two forts. If you get on three or three or four of those picks, right, early. You set yourself up to be a legitimate Super Bowl contender if Aaron Rodgers is healthy. And that's the bottom line. Yes, that is the bottom line. Robbie, anything you would like to plug over at Jet X this week? Nah, I think uh, I think we're good to no, actually, Corbett, me and Corbett tonight at seven. Um, live on YouTube, I think. If I'm wrong, I'm sorry. But yeah, check that out at seven. We'll send a notification out through the Jet X mobile app as well. <laughs> I love it. Robbie, you are the man. Appreciate it. Good luck with the show with Wayne. You tell him that we love him, and uh, we wish he could still play in the slot for this Jets team coming up. He would help a lot. Mm, that would be nice. I mean, imagine Wayne in today's league. No no hard hits over the middle. Oh, man, that would be uh, pretty sweet. Wayne Corbett was Wes Welker and Julian Edelman before Wes Welker and Julian Edelman. I think Welker and Edelman called him the godfather. No, it was Welker. No, it was Edelman and Amendola called him the godfather about 10 years ago. Yeah, he's the godfather of the white slot receiver in today's That's NFL. It. And his favorite prospect, he mentioned it on the show two weeks ago. Guess who it is? His favorite receiver prospect, Lad McConkey, of course. I can see that. Yeah, you know, but it's crazy because Lad McConkey is the same measurable as Garrett Wilson. The difference oh, is he's, he's a, so he's a white guy, so no one's talking about him like, like that. He's so explosive, and that's what Wayne was saying. And yeah, he's. I'm looking at him more. He's right, but um, yeah, we'll see what he says tonight. I'll tell you where look McConkey's going to go, and it's going to bother the whole league. The Chiefs Ooh. are going to take him at the end of the yeah, first. Yeah, that's going to suck. Yeah. Yep. Book it. Robbie, you're the man. Appreciate you. You got it. Later, Jake. Ladies and gentlemen, Robbie Sabo, JetsXFactor.com. Check it out. Does a great job covering the team. Today's Jake Asman show is presented by my friends over at Underdog Fantasy. Folks, get to Underdog Fantasy. Download the app and sign up using my promo code Asman, and you'll get a $100 deposit match underdog is so much fun uh shout out to nate yesterday in our discord chat he was at the yankee game he almost won big on underdog but the yankees won so he said ah it's all good so you could put your baseball picks in you could it, you could already start drafting your fantasy teams at underdog by the way they have their best ball drafts live and ready to roll you could play fantasy just for the day you also could do underdogs pick them which you guys have seen me talk about a lot on the show they have every sport so just because there's no football right now does not mean there's not baseball basketball hockey Underdog has something for everyone. Check it out. Master starts later this week. They have golf um, options for pick them that you could be a part of. Underdog Fantasy. Download the app or go to the website and sign up using my code ASMAN. Try it out if you've never played. It's a lot of fun. You could put in five bucks and you actually have $10 in your account because they'll deposit match you up to $100 when you use my promo code ASMAN at sign up. All right, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, the great JR Jet says, hold on now. I want to show you the money, people. Show me the money. Show me the money! Money, money, money. Uh. Ladies and gentlemen, the following five listeners just became as maniacs, courtesy of J.R. Jet. Salem Hoy, ISURB4L, who came in second place in our bracket challenge. I mean, who doesn't want to be ISU right now? My man is a as maniac, and he got our second place prize. Addison M, Steve, USMC, three slash six, and Sonny Crockett, courtesy of our man, JR Jet. You all just became As Maniac members. So congratulations and shout out to JR Jet 
for the support. It goes a long way. He's got a super chat for us as well. And he says, great show as always. Would definitely get your autograph if I could. Uh, it will. It has negative value, but I'll give you the sounder anyway. I appreciate you, JR Jet. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Very kind. Uh, more calls right now. Ladies and gentlemen, we've had a Hall of Fame list of callers, so let's keep it rolling. Mr. Bonesy, live from Madison Ave. Up next. Hello, Bones. Jake, my brother. Jake, my brother. How How, yeah. how is the juice store today? I mean, it, it appears from my window right now that it is a beautiful spring day in New York City. It, it is a nice day. We just opened up at, at 10, so we still got a little time. We usually get bumping around like, you know, 11.30 to 1.30, and then we'll take a little time off, and then we get, you know, busy again at the end of the day. But it's a nice day, so we'll, we'll see who's shoe shopping. But these foreigners, baby, they love our stuff, so. <laughs> they come from all over. Like Craig from Australia, he's flying into New York just to buy some shoes at the shoe store. Hell yeah. One thing about our sh our shoes is they're made in America. It's family owned and it's they come from uh, Boston. That's where the shoes are made. And people they're like double the price overseas. So when foreigners are coming into the city, they're coming to, they're coming to see uh Mr. Bonesy. Cause that's right. They know they're, going no what, they're going to Alden's on Madison. They're coming to Let's Alden, get out the baby. name of the place. Let's go. <laughs> that's right. All the shoes. Yo, so one thing you gotta you gotta give uh Robbie uh, a heads up to lower his volume a little bit when when Lowski was killing it with the with the goodness Robbie was looking at us it, like god damn I gotta lower my shit <laughs> <laughs> but Lowski's the best man shout out to King no, yo he, he, he's an he's an all timer it just there's no way to describe King Lowski other than just playing a clip to get Robbie a taste and then Lowski calling in was just the cherry on top and Robbie was like he was like wait I don't know who King is let me Google him quick. <laughs> I was like, yes, type in King Lowski. See what comes up, bro. I was dying. That's great. Uh, yo, so all this, you know, with with all the Bowers talk and all, all the, the who who we're gonna draft, imagine this happens. Imagine we draft an offensive lineman in the first round, and where God's gift to earth comes and all of our offensive linemen stay healthy and he doesn't touch the field. I saw people saying, "What do you? Wh why are you going to waste a pick and you can get a weapon? He's not going to be a starter." It's like, have you seen what we've gone through the past couple of years with injuries on an offensive line? It's disgusting. I, it's like a a dream come true. If we draft an offensive lineman in the first round and he doesn't get on the field, that means we're going to go on a Super Bowl run. And, and, and that like, guy getting to sit and learn behind Tyron Smith and Morgan Moses, like that, that, that like, cause remember Andrew Thomas, who's now an all pro left tackle for the giants. He struggled as a rookie. So if they took a tackle, let's say, or a uh, Fatano who could play tackle or guard, and that guy doesn't have to play right away and they get to sit. That's not the worst thing in the world. That, that might be beneficial, especially if it's like a true tackle. And plus, like maybe Tippman had success as a rookie because he didn't start right away. We ever think about that, that the Jets were smart to basically slow his development down over the summer last year and make him third string and really earn it before they made him the starter. It's, it's so true. And I, it's just like Aaron Rodgers. If none of our offensive linemen get hurt, you guys are going to start hearing Alan Lazard's name again. He's going to be making these guys look like stars. That's what Aaron Rodgers does. You remember all his tight ends, like, Bobby Tanyan and Andrew Corliss and all these guys that like, first off, Rogers doesn't even feed the tight end. Like, like, you know, a thousand yards. Like I think maybe one time he got a thousand yard receiver at a tight end. I, I forget who it was. It, I think it was, um, uh, Jermichael Finley, right. That was back in the day who his man was. Um, but I just feel like, let us – we got to draft Big Beef up front. we got to protect this guy. He's old. we got to have a, a, a solid front. If, if nobody gets hurt, sounds like a wet dream to Mr. Bonesy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, you know, speaking of Mr. Bonesy, I found an interesting, Bones, that you called into the fake ass man show the other day. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> it's time for the greatest shoe salesman since Al Bundy, the great – Mr. Bonesy. Hey, Bonesy. Think my brother. Think my brother. Bonesy, did you see Gators in person? They're you? 
crazy, right? Dude, it's freaking crazy, man. I just, I don't even know what to say anymore. He's just I'm crazy. I can't. I want you get to do this thing about it. <laughs> Which is so crazy. I'm trying to sell the shoes, but oh man, I, I don't know about the jets that I got the shoes to sell, but I get it. It's a little crazy, man. I can't take them anymore. It's just crazy. Oh my God, he's crazy. Well, I'm one of the greats, Mr. Bonesy. <laughs> He, he's he's trying to really hit when I laugh and talk at the same time, and it's really <laughs> funny. Uh, I can't wait to see what he does on episode two. That fake Ashman man, that guy's a that guy's a he's a special man. I mean, the uh, the fake my brother, fake my brother was too funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Gator, oh, I fucking love that guy. <laughs> Bodes, you have a wonderful day. All right, enjoy the spring weather. All right, I'll see you in three hours. Ladies and, <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Bonesy, he knows. Well, there'll be more than one show today. Come on now. Uh, a day where we only do one show is rare during the week. It happens. I did three yesterday, but most of the time we do at least two Monday to Friday and at least one on the weekends. But it all depends on the news cycle. Hit the like button if you're tuned in. Only 200 likes right now. We got over 400 people watching live. Tom says Jake needs to do a celebrity appearances, celebrity appearance at Bonesy's. Oh, it's coming, and I'm bringing a cast of characters with me, too. A month from right now, when Craig from Australia is in town, we're making an appearance at the shoe store with Neil, Rob. It's going to be wild. Shadow Realm writes, and if we're in dire need of a weapon midseason, we can always trade for one not happening for an O-lineman. Yeah, look, trying to get an offensive lineman midseason gets you Roger Saffold, so I agree with that. Tim from Fishland is up next. Hello, Tim. Going back to Mr. Al Bundy, the nicer version of Al Bundy. Yeah, he's completely right on that. Rodgers definitely will make any receiver better. Um, my thing was with to the Bauer boys. So when you look at the tape of Bowers, what do you trust Hackett to use him right? Like? Please tell me that. No, I you trust line, line shift on the ball, but I don't see well, the thing. Is, the thing is, the thing is, though, he gets open when they do line shifts and they motion him. Rodgers doesn't do any of that. He just lines up to raise the defense and then, and then snaps the ball. He doesn't make anybody move. He might, you know, make a, a, a hand gesture to a receiver because he sees something like that, but it's pretty bland. Okay, now that's how Rodgers operates, but they, they don't do any type of motion or anything like that. You know what I mean? So I just don't see – and listen, the, the, the transition from the NFL to college, yeah, he was in the SEC. That's all great. But it's a goddamn night and day difference. That's why most of these kids don't pan out. Okay, so I'd rather take something that's more insurable and that's more reliable, like a tackle, pray back. Even the receivers, my man, like he throws people open. He can put the ball anywhere. I'd rather get a receiver if we can trade back and get in the second round or third round. Okay, we need to start thinking about long-term solutions for the offensive line. That is the biggest thing. And you just said it. You hit it on the nail. You have two veteran tackles that could teach the guy. Plus, if we're on long drives this season, they could come in and spell him. Tim, I, look, I, if they can't get one of the receivers, because I think the talent of those guys is just too good to pass up, I'm team offensive line. I think that's fair. And I'm with you on Bowers. I, I, I don't dislike Brock Bowers. I just don't love him at 10. You know, people think I'm like anti-Bowers as a prospect. I see the appeal. Like I watched a lot of Georgia. All right. I get it. I just don't think it's logically smart for an all-in year to take such a boomer bust type of prospect. Like if they take Bowers, I will root for him. I'll probably get the jersey from Parts Unknown for 30 bucks. <laughs> but I mean, like. He better be great right away. He doesn't get a grace period. He better be Sam Laporta. He better be Kittle. He better be Kelsey. He better have that type of impact pretty quick. Like, I'm sorry. He needs to be better than what Dalton Kincaid was last year. He was a pick in the 20s. Nate writes in with a super chat. Cha-ching, Nate. Not drafting an offensive lineman after our offensive line injury luck is like not bringing in sunscreen after you get sunburned. You will be burned. Look, the, the, the Jets never get lucky with O-line injuries. Never get lucky with injuries. See Aaron Rodgers. So 
I think the idea that you're set on the offensive line because you signed an injury-prone Tyron Smith to me is crazy. AVT also has gotten hurt the last two years in the month of October. Tippin missed a couple games last year. Just I, the, the If they take a receiver early, then I'm going to operate under the premise they brought back McGovern. Maybe they signed Bakhtiari. Maybe they signed Long Island's own Donovan Smith. Um, Steven NYC writes in Jake led to reach out live. Thank you, Steve. Bonesy is right. Imagine the high class problem we would have if we use 10 for an O lineman and he doesn't play. Doesn't that mean we're in the playoffs? Most likely dude. If you tell me the Jets use a top 10 pick on an offensive lineman, that guy doesn't play this team. Maybe he's in the Super Bowl. Like that's what we're talking about. If you tell me you get 17 games from each of the Jets starters, where are they weak? Assuming Rodgers obviously played all 17 games as well. More calls. NY Jets, Florida. We're going Florida back to back here. What's up, NY? Good, um, good morning or afternoon. Good morning, Jake. A uh, couple <laughs> points real quick. A <laughs> couple points real quick. I dropped my phone in the water yesterday. I had to get a new phone. A couple points. Uh, Knobel, it's obvious Knobel was a 2022 eighth round pick. They made a special round for Knobel. In the 2022 draft, that's what Lane was trying to say yesterday. So uh, I'm surprised Robbie didn't have that knowledge. Um, Bonesy sounds like a punch drunk uh, Sylvester Stallone and Rocky after he's been hit about 150 times. I didn't know Gary was a part-time astrophysicist also. But uh, <laughs> other than that, I'll get to my Jets point. Jake, when you did the mock draft yesterday, I, I really think I'm willing to go into the 20s with the Eagles or late because JD loves uh, versatile players such as ABT. And since he busted on Mackay, I think he wants a safer pick such as the Powers Johnson. And Powers Johnson would, would, could be Tittman's backup. And also he could play guard. And I'm willing to get the second rounder. And I love Chris Jenkins, but I know we can't go there you know, with all the offensive people. I would love to get Chris Jenkins in the second round or Led McConkey. So why why can't we go down into the twenties? You guys were were definitely high on the top ten or fifteen, but Powers Johnson, a guy is a solid would be a solid player. I mean, we don't need a Hall of Famer right now, and we need we need we need more players. You know, we need, we need a run stopper, we need a wide receiver, we need a tackle, we need a safety. So I'm trying to, you know, good. I don't I don't want to move Tipman off center. That's why. I, th I think it, it's a if you're going to do the trade down and take alignment, it's a better use to get a guy who can play tackle for you. That's why I like him as a prospect. I just I think they're they're better off addressing offensive line in the trade down. Or if you're moving back that far, take one of the receivers there, and, and I'm assuming you're getting a second and probably an extra pick if you're moving down to the 20s from 10. Like I don't have the trade chart in front of me, but that's a big haul you're getting if they were to do that. So second round pick, you would have to take like a Patrick Paul type. Johnny, up next. Hello, Johnny. Hey, what up, Jake? Hey, Johnny, man, do I do talk about the Mets when I call you, bro? Yeah, you call you call about the Mets sometimes. That's all good. Oh, okay. Big win for you guys last night. Oh, we're World Series is back on, dude. <laughs> That's right. Automatically, give us four games, and we're gonna go on a roll. Keep going, right? Nemo must have looked into the uh, eclipse and uh, just got super hero powers and whatnot because he went off last night, but. Yeah, dude. Um, I'm trade back, man, and get a freaking offensive line. I think I keep saying the same thing, man. But bro, I'm all about getting some more weapons, man. Like, I would love if they go wide receiver. Like, dude, that I started watching a lot more on Odunze and kind of like hearing about his background and how he grew up like in a farm. So, you know, I think um, if I'm not mistaken, Murph was talking about that. So I looked it all up. And uh, yeah, man, I mean, that dude knows about hard work. He fits the type of player that um, JD likes to go ahead and, and get. Somebody's going to work hard, be about the team and whatnot, you know. So I don't know, dude. I believe in whatever he does is going to be good for us. So I believe in that man and, you know, go Jets and go Mets, I guess, right? Hey, let's keep it rolling, Johnny. Um, I'm glad you're happy. I, I look, I'm team trade down or trade up, right? 
They stick and pick a 10, depends who the player is, but I, I want something crazy draft time, baby. All right, let's get wild. Speaking of getting wild, this man now has a tattoo of the Jets' old but soon-to-be new logo on his arm. He just celebrated a birthday. Ladies and gentlemen, VR up next. Hello, VR. What's going on, Jake? Let me tell you, man, I IRS time. Did we got an update? Hey. It, it's still healing, uh, so I got the Saniderm on it. But once it heals, then I'll do, like, the full reveal specifically here on the Jake Asman show. My man. <laughs> no doubt. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm thinking it's IRS time, man. If, if I was in an IRS audit, man, I would love King Lowski to be on a conference call talking <laughs> to the IRS agent like, no, he got it right. You, you can't do that. You can't. You owe him some money. $2,000. J-E-T-S. Just, just, just. <laughs> All right, so the purpose of my call, uh, I can't hold it anymore. I'm tired of, of the Bowers talk. I'm tired of the Bowers boys. First of all, just from a New York Jets perspective, we do not have a, a good history of drafting tight ends in the first round. Uh, dare I say names like Kyle Brady, Jay Samaro, Johnny Mitchell. I mean, that is just the beginning of it. The second thing is, is that I've watched film, you know, I'm down here in Florida. I've watched Georgia games, you know, practically the SEC is on all the time. I've watched film, but I, I, I've taken a deeper dive in watching film specifically on Brock Bauer since he's been a name that's been, you know, so popular among the Bauer boys. So in watching the film, a couple of things uh, stood out to me. First of all, He's inconsistent in separating when he's getting those passes on seam routes, when he's covered uh, on man-to-man -man by a linebacker or a safety. So he's going to receive more of that. I mean, they play a lot of zone in, in, in CFB in college, but they don't play a lot of the zone coverages in the NFL. You're going to get a fast linebacker or a box safety on that on the tight end and he's he's very inconsistent in, in, in separation and the reason why he's inconsistent in that separation is because he he has a small frame he is basically a blown up wide receiver i've even seen plays where he he ends the routes early you know he's playing in the zone he's in open space so you see him running around and breaking tackles and stuff like that but he's not consistent when he is blocking or he or the play is not coming to him. You know, he's just not moving. So, I, you know, like you said, it's a boom or bust type situation. I don't want Bowers in the first round. That is the bottom line. What if they trade it back? Would you take him in a trade down? It, it depends on what the trade down is. Now, see, I was I wanted to talk to, to um, Robbie about trade uh, trade scenarios. You know, um, whether that's Denver or the Raiders or Indy or Cincy, you know, what's the sweet spot for us to get like, you know, maximum for our, our you know, our pick. If you look at the, you know, the charts, 1300 for um, for pick 10. And for me, the sweet spot is Cincinnati, uh, Cincinnati at 18 and then getting and recouping our second round pick at 49. So. Even in that scenario, I would still rather a Brian Thomas Jr. and a JPJ in the second round or vice versa, getting possibly a Fatuano and then a Xavier Leggett or Lad McConkey in uh, the second round, the pick 49. Uh, it's about even, uh, you know, 18 and 49 comes out to about 1310 in the, you know, the scenario in, in, the, in the draft. So... I mean, it's about even, but I, I still would not want Bowers even then. I mean, it's just I don't want a tight end in the first round. I think we have tight ends that are serviceable, even above average with Aaron Rodgers as our quarterback. And I think we just stick with that. And, you know, if we want a tight end, we can get some serviceable ones either in free agency or later in the draft. That's my opinion. So, VR, you want the Jets to build a wall and Woody Johnson is paying for it. 
build a wall. That's that's what I want. Yep, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I love it. VR, you're the man. You have a good birthday, by the way. Yeah, it was great, man. I went on a, a seven day cruise. We went to uh, Puerto Rico, Virgin Islands, St. Thomas, and uh, Dominican Republic. Uh, you know, I put some pictures up on the Discord. If you're not on the Discord, if you're not on the Patreon, you need to get on there because everybody puts their stuff on there. It's some cool stuff. You get to know people and, you know, just really bond with all of our Jets brothers and sisters, you know, on the Discord. So I put some pictures on there. I had one with a monkey on my head because yeah. <laughs> it's a monkey land in the Dominican Republic. And, you know, you can't do that here in the United States. So it was it was awesome. Thanks for asking, bro. Uh, VR, that's awesome, man. I'm glad you had a good birthday. Good trip with the fam. That's great. Got time for one more call here. Ladies and gentlemen, he's always in the truck. And he joins us now. Dirty, up next. Hello, Dirty. Yo, yo. So uh, I will say this. I, I've said this about Brock Bowers. It's not that I don't like him. I do. I, I think he's a tremendous talent. Needs a little work on the on the blocking. His yak is great. Like, he gets eight and change after the catch. But remember what happened to Michael Mayer. Like Everybody thought that he was going to be this high-drafted guy in the first round, and he fell. Actually, he fell in the second round. And it's like that, you know, I think he's going to fall farther than we think. Um, I agree with you. I don't think that we should pick him at 10. Um, if we can move down, again, we've had this conversation. If we can move down, that'd be great. Um, but if we do, I think we should, we should solidify a tackle. A tackle is the important thing. If we, it, you know, I hear a lot of people say we got to go for the future. I understand that getting a guard is not going to help us in the future. Getting another center is not going to help us in the future. Getting a tackle is what we have had the problem. with. And if we do get a second pick, maybe second round, Patrick Paul is a good one, you know, or if we do trade back into the high twenties, Guyton will be there. Mims will be there. I think Latham, Latham could fall ish. And I think he's going. I, 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 I'll tell you what, Dar. I said it earlier. I don't know if you saw. It. I think Latham could be one of the biggest surprises draft night. I could see him going in the top ten. I know for a fact really? the NFL teams are a lot higher on him than a lot of people realize. Yeah, I mean, like uh, Lance Lance Zerline told me a month and a half ago already that he, he he's his number one offensive line prospect. Like people really like Latham a lot, and I'm just telling you, it wouldn't surprise me if he went seven to Tennessee. I I could see Latham going there. Okay, feels. I, I'm just worried about his lack of, um, you know, experience. That's all. But other than that, I mean, he's not going to be ranked that high unless there's a, uh, <clears throat> unless there's an actual, you know, people have done their homework on him. So, uh, dirty, you getting out of this truck is crazy right now. I didn't think this was possible. Nobody knew I had legs. <laughs> I, I sure didn't. <laughs> Great call, man. Uh, Appreciate you. All right. Later. Ladies and gentlemen, dirty on the move. Who would have thought he could actually get out of the truck? Unreal. Hey, hit the like button. 226 likes right now. Let's get to 300 before we wrap. Appreciate everyone for their support. Thank you all who tuned in today. Uh, I want to thank the audience as always. Shout out to the Asmaniacs. Shout out to all the Patreon members. Get on Patreon and you gain Discord access and get the show as a podcast, plus all the other perks we offer on Patreon. You go to patreon.com slash Jake Asman Show. Doing a giveaway on Instagram to be eligible. For a Gus Buster umbrella, you have to just follow me at Jake Asman. Super easy. Shout out to everyone who has followed. Super easy. Link is in the description for the video. So check that out if you are interested in the giveaway for the Gus Buster umbrella. All right. Thanks again to everyone for their tremendous, tremendous support. My name is Jake Asman. This has been the Jake Asman Show. We will be back later on with show number two. Until then, though, enjoy this clip. As I say, farewell, Jeff fans. 16 days until the NFL draft. Three NFL draft, the New York J-E-T-S Jets. Come on! Select Will McDonald, linebacker, what? Iowa State. What the fuck? Wow. I can't believe this shit! All what right. the fuck? You 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 go 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 I hate this team. I hate them. I hate them!